Hi everyone, this is Ashraf from Motor Magazine. As you probably know, fuel is a very hot talked about topic in Sri Lanka right now. Not only the shortages and the queues concerned with fuel, but also the quality of fuel. We are seeing a lot of things on social media, hearing a lot of stories from people about how the fuel quality is impacting their vehicles. So we have gathered three experts from the automotive field here to have a bit of a discussion on this fuel quality issue and you know what can be done about it, what you should watch out for, that sort of thing. So we have Vimukti Randeni with us, Anurudh Yapa, and Kalum Vijayvasana. All three are experts in the field, they are very knowledgeable people and you can take whatever they say as being the most accurate advice around. So without further ado, I shall pose the first of our questions to Mr. Anurudh Yapa. That is that uh, fuel has become a much talked about issue these days as I mentioned. Let's focus on the quality of fuel. Could you just tell us uh, if, uh, you know, what we have seen, what's going on here? Really? I think this came up with the adverse uh, reports we got from uh, various media and uh, some poor experience our people had uh, got because some people say they have found uh, not the same fuel that they, they used to uh, use on their vehicles. So the difference, they say the color is different, then the, the smell is different. And uh, some people say some water contamination they have found and some sediments. So uh, that's how this quality issue has come. They have uh, uh, encountered those things, but uh, we cannot exactly say uh, this is due to uh, poor, poor fuel quality from the suppliers, I think. Sometimes the people, they get uh, their vehicles fueled immediately after a Bowser is uh, uh, into a station tank. So then what happens is uh, the tanks, we know uh, they have been used for uh, many years and some sedimentation should be there. So all inside is agitated and the sediments may come up quickly uh, if we fuel a car immediately after downloading a Bowser to a, a tank. So these things can happen. In general, we have not found uh, big problems with fuel so far because there were reports and the people they have, they may have individually experienced some bad things. But in general, the cars are running, but some, some issues are there because most of the people I have heard, they are telling, uh, I, uh, fuel consumption is now higher than usual. So there may be reasons because nowadays we get uh, fuel from various suppliers, not from the CPC and uh, uh, IOC uh, itself. So the CPC may be buying uh, fuel from various ends. So the octane rating and all, the C10 rating may be different. May may not be up to the, the standard what we have uh, used to. So those kind of things, the low octane rating and all can uh, help uh, poor power out, uh, therefore the high fuel consumption. So on these things, I think this quality issue has uh, come up. Thank you. So uh, Vimukti and Kalum, do you all have anything to add to that before we move to the next uh, point? Yes. Uh, so uh, I... I uh... Hello, I agree with what uh, Yapa said. Uh, my opinion also is that uh, the uh, perceived, that there are certain perceived issues of the quality. I'll explain a little bit, but I uh, agree with Yapa that uh, uh, most of these issues are from the retail end, not from the supply. There, are, there might be issues of storage, uh, like he said, uh, sediments and all uh, and also uh, I have to say I tell you uh, now uh, due to the scarcity of the fuel uh, people do tend to uh, you know purchase sometimes not from a fuel station from other areas uh, other other uh, illegitimate uh, parties these might have quality issues uh, so they might be diluted with uh, uh, certain cheaper fuels, kerosene for example, and uh, this might result in issues. Now another important point, I saw a lot on social media, Ashraf, that people are complaining about the color of the 
fuel. Now, what you have to understand is that uh, the color of the fuel, let's say petrol or diesel or kerosene, doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the fuel. Uh, depending on the source, uh, it can change. And also, uh, I, would, uh, I would really like to recommend our viewers to visit the CPETCO website. There, uh, the color is mentioned for each fuel. Now, uh, it, uh, there is a certain terminology, uh, there is a certain organization uh, we, we call ASTM, American Society for Testing and Material. So this ASTM is a color rating. Now, if you look at the, uh, the uh, under the color uh, in the Zero and Petroleum Corporation, they give a ASTM number up to that. So anybody can Google what I'm saying. And you can see that this number starting for let's say zero, one, two, three, for example. So it's a range of colors. So if it's or if it can be almost white to uh, dark brown, and within that range, depending on the supply, the color changes, right? Uh, so, so the color is not a particular indication of the quality, and just because. Uh, you know, the color of the petrol that you purchased a month back is different from now, especially with the current condition, uh, current situation, uh, the, the government purchases from different vendors also. So, uh, color is not, not something that uh, you should, you know, assess the quality of a fuel with. But, but, now, uh, if you really look at the quality of fuel that is available officially in Sri Lanka versus the fuel standards required by the modern vehicles on the road, there is a disparity, right? This is something that we have to, uh, our, our customers uh, need to be aware of, our motorists need to be aware of. I will just, uh, I don't know whether I'm taking too much time, but you know, there are common words that uh, uh, motorists uh, would have heard like you know euro 4 euro 5 euro 6 standards and uh, you know premium petrol and uh, 92 and octane or 95 octane and uh, there are common questions like you know uh, my, my my i use 95 can i use 92 will there be an adverse effect i will just briefly briefly explain this euro standard and to give an idea Officially, uh, quoting the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, where we are. Now, the world uh, in 2014, I believe, uh, Euro 6 emission standards was introduced. 14 or 18, Callum might know. Uh, so, uh, it, uh, these, these Euro standards may basically uh, deal with what kind of uh, harmful uh, gases or particles come out of the exhaust. So, to make the exhaust cleaner, the fuel has to be of a superior standard. And uh, superior by what I mean uh, by superior standard of quality doesn't mean necessarily the octane value. Octane is something that, uh, you know, uh, in very, very simple terms, the higher the octane number, uh, the smoother. Uh, the fuel burns in your engine. This is very, very important, especially in modern petrol and diesel engines and modern petrol engines, especially which use direct gasoline injection, direct injection. Okay. So, uh, if your car um, uses direct injection, you can, you can easily find out whether it does because you can just Google it, Google the model of your car and the year and you can easily find out the specifications and find that keyword whether it's gasoline direct injection right because these modern engines burn at uh, they have very very high pressures what we call a compression ratio and they burn uh, very lean mixtures the octane value is very important but it's not only octane that is important there are many many other factors which if you go to 
the CPETCO website or IOC website, you can see the specifications of the field, how many different numbers are there. These all reflect the quality. I will quote just one for you to get an example. This is very, very important, this fact. What we call the sulfur content. Okay. So, sulfur is, a, is an element, okay, which is an impurity in fossil fuels. Okay. So, now the euro, the latest euro standards uh, require in petrol and diesel 10 parts per million sulfur. That is the standard. 10 parts per million. Okay. So, quoting the website, I will tell you super diesel uh, has maximum 10 parts per million sulfur according to the website. Okay. That is okay. But normal auto diesel can have up to 3000 parts per 3000 parts per million right so that's a huge amount of sulfur okay then 95 of 10 50 parts per million regular octane can be 300 parts per million now what is the euro 6 standard latest standard 10 okay so already the fuel that we have has the very high sulfur content. Now, what happens if you have so much sulfur? Okay. Uh, sulfur burns in your uh, engine and uh, then uh, it produces sulfur oxides. Right? It reacts. And this reacts with water vapor and creates sulfuric acid. This sulfuric acid results in corrosion of metal parts and it can also damage if you have heard there's modern vehicles have what is called the catalytic converter it's a very expensive component it has platinum and other things uh, other uh, valuable uh, metals and metal oxides and especially there is a component uh, there, there is a material called the barium carbonate in this catalytic converter which reacts with the uh, sulfur di uh, sulfuric acid and uh, then the, the function of that also gets damaged. Uh, now, uh, the, re the result of using sub uh, substandard fuel, as you can see, uh, is, is quite, you know, it's not just about the octane. But moving on, we will discuss uh, when it comes round. I can discuss, and, and I think Yafa and uh, Kalin can also discuss what will happen. This will be also very important because the choice of now, let's say somebody who used 95 octane may not have the choice to, uh, uh, you know, uh, see, uh, pump 95 octane. They might only come across 92. Then what will happen if they use it, for example? Um, so uh, this is also something that we should uh, discuss. Uh, but uh, I think we'll move on and then come back again. Otherwise, I'm too, talking too much. Okay. Thanks, Vimukti. And I think you also touched on the aspect of uh, fuel specification as well. So I'm going to pass over now to Kalum, which is what can happen in an engine when it's run on substandard fuel. And that is actually coming back to what you said as well, Vimukti. Not just fuel of bad quality, but fuel that is also not of a specification that is meant for the engine in question. So over to you, Kalum. So, uh, as substandard, we can refer to different elements, like uh, like Vimukti said, the sulfur content, and also there's latent heat of vaporization, uh, which would uh, result in the flame propagation. As Vimukti touched on this point of uh, gasoline direct injection vehicles, they have a, a slow flame propagation because uh, most of the most of these uh, GDI vehicles are turbocharged, small turbocharged engines. So they run high boost pressures, high compression. So if this uh, latent heat of vaporization is uh, high on that, it will withstand it. But if it's low, it will uh, lead to a lot of problems. And also when it comes to uh, octane, so let me just uh, give a brief on octane. Uh, I'll just uh, tell in layman's term, I'll, be, I'll keep it as short as possible. So. Um, Octane, what we refer to as there is Ron and Mon. Ron is research octane number. Mon is motor octane number. So octane is generally resistance to knock. 
it's it's if you if you generalize it it's resistance to knock so this ron and mon uh, the common reference is ron that is the research octane number but uh, in uh, you know high conditions example high uh, high throttle higher temperature high inlet, inlet temperature it's mon that plays the role so if you if you actually take uh, like uh, vimukti said there are technical there's technical data on the sipetco side so if you take our 95 octane there's something uh, there's now the general term when you take the us standards there's something called pon that is the pump octane number so you get uh, premium fuel the general fuel premium fuel and it's categorized like that so this pon number is the is the average that is mon plus ron divided by 2 so that is that that number is what you can consider in the ideal ideal conditions as in uh, the run number is the number that is uh, like relevant to idling and uh, slow cruising but uh, if you're on high throttle and uh, say you're climbing an incline or if you're climbing a hill this mon uh, number is what comes into play so the pon number which is the average is 90 of that fuel that we get as 95 octane right so from Cipetco, and uh, there's something called octane sensitivity. So octane sensitivity is the difference between these two. If these two is close, the mon number and the ron number is close, you have really good fuel. But sadly, uh, what we get is also not that great because the mon number, if I'm not mistaken, of 95 octane is 88 octane, and the ron number is 95 octane. So uh, there itself we don't get uh, good stuff so that itself is a problem and uh, latent heat of vaporization i didn't find any information as such on that because these things are applicable when it comes to raising because when it comes to raising uh, these these things are applicable because the tune is set on these things so uh, these particular elements but um, even even the latest vehicles the new engines are um, tuned and optimized accordingly so definitely running substandard fuel will have uh, a lot of uh, consequences in time to come mostly like even if you take uh, diesel it's the same because uh, if you take uh, if you put like uh, normal diesel onto something which requires super diesel the c10 number is less the lubricity is less and there the sulfur content is also more on that so these pumps run at very high uh, pressure on a common rail there are two pumps they run at very high rail pressure very high pressure so these needs to be lubricated and this lubricating property is not there on the normal diesel so it's evident that uh, the pumps will fail prematurely in time to come so definitely there is an issue vimukti and yapa do you all have anything to add to that i know both of you run a work at workshops which see a wide variety of european and japanese vehicles among others so what have you all seen in the recent past uh, coming into your workshops, gentlemen? Uh, for me, uh, what I can say is this uh, Euro standard that is uh, not for classifying fuel, really. It is uh, emission standards, uh, as uh, Vimukti say. So it started in 1993 from Euro 1, and now it has come up to a Euro 6, 6B now. So they are planning to introduce Euro 7. So as uh, Vimukti uh, said they have uh, tightened up all the parameters for emissions. So now they are trying to get less and less emissions out of engines. So the engine designers will have to change engine designs and those engines, for those engines, they have to find the correct fuel. So in recent past, uh, we have got almost all the new vehicles from uh, mainly some some vehicles are designed to uh, european markets because i clearly remember uh, certain uh, manufacturers they did not offer their all their vehicle range to uh, sri lanka when we work for agents and we tried to get uh, when we were trying to get the, the latest models some they straight away refused their main reason was your fuel quality is not up to our standard so but it is not applicable to the gray imports because a lot of people directly import vehicles from uh, UK and other European markets. But they don't consider 
what world is recommended for those engines. So uh, now uh, Sibetco says their world is uh, Euro 4, but now the cars are running on Euro 6 and 6B uh, emission standards. So the fuel requirement, the quality of fuel required uh, for those engines is not available here. So as a result, we have found some, uh, the engines of new vehicles, certain models are subjected to very frequent wear. So maybe due to high sulfur content, as Vimukti said, uh, the sulfur uh, converts into sulfuric acid inside the combustion, uh, the, the chamber and cylinder, and it, uh, it, uh, it is applied all over the, uh, the cylinder, the, the cylinder pour rings everywhere, and it's very corrosive and it's very abrasive. So these things may affect uh, the longevity of the new engine. So one thing is very sure, uh, we don't have uh, correct fuel for those uh, very latest uh, engines. That I have to add. Nimuk, did you have anything that you have come across during yes. your recent? Uh... Yes. So, uh, as I also work for a automobile a vehicle agent here, uh, I can agree with uh, Yapa about uh, the grey imports, especially uh, now. And especially the diesels, petrols also, but especially the diesels. Uh, now, sometimes when I tell people that you know, you, if you are buying such a vehicle, a modern vehicle, you go with the uh, import from the agents. They think you know, ah, since you are working for agents, you are saying that. But no. Uh, now I know for a fact that in most cases, the vehicles imported brand new through local agents are still Euro four engines. They are decide, they, they, you, we do not get the, uh, the, uh, the latest engine. And uh, even, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a shame because uh, the, the more modern engines, they consume less, they emit less harmful uh, gases. But, um, but uh, because of the quality of fuel, uh, the, the manufacturer does not recommend. So when you, have a vehicle which was originally uh, offered in the let's say the UK market or the Japanese market which are the common markets which uh, the grey imports come from uh, then uh, there are there are problems uh, it can be uh, you know injectors loss of performance wear and tear uh, various things misfiring uh, then uh, now diesels have what is called diesel particulate filter or the DPF where it gathers all the soot and all. So uh, these uh, get clogged very quickly. So uh, so many issues. Uh, but what I can say is that if the quality of fuel in Sri Lanka does not come up to Euro 6 standard uh, in the future, in the near future, uh, there will be big issues because now, of course, now we are not importing any vehicles, but once we start, it's not going to be forever. Then uh, whatever vehicles come now, even from India in the future, will have Euro 5 or Euro 6 standard. Now all the Indian made vehicles, even the, even the small trucks are at least Euro 4. So uh, something has to be done uh, very, very soon. Otherwise, we will have a big problem. Uh, we'll only be able to run old vehicles on the road. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, that's an that's issue that we face and uh, especially the diesels, the grey market diesels uh, that we get, we have many issues uh, because of the poor fuel quality, mainly the sulphur, the sulphur content. So, moving to the next question for Yapa. Uh, can the average motorist, average layperson really identify these substandard or contaminated fuel? And if so, how would they identify it? If most people just drive up to the pump, have the fuel pump and drive off. So how can they identify the substandard or contaminated fuel? The motorist, uh, they, they can find uh, whether the fuel is not uh, good, but what happens is they go to the filling stations and they get their tanks filled and they have no chance of seeing what fuel is uh, put into their tanks unless they feel some difference in their 
engine performance like misfiring, uh, then uh, lower pulling power, starting difficulties, uh, high engine temperatures like that. So uh, if they have the chance of, if they are suspicious of the, the quality of fuel, they can take out a sample and they can uh, identify the fuel by appearance really. Uh, if it is the, the, the petrol, if it is petrol, it should be clear and uh, we can't say colorless. There may be various colors uh, as uh, Vimukti uh, already explained, uh, but it should not be cloudy and uh, it shouldn't have uh, sediments and uh, it should have the proper smell and if we take a petrol sample and if we uh, get kerosene smell something is definitely wrong and then uh, the water contamination so if the, if water is added to the fuel it is very clearly shown separately so uh, there are two layers of fuel and uh, water so likewise they can identify and uh, uh, yes that's that's how they can do it so they will get some uh, problems with the vehicle and at least when when a problem comes we will have to first check whether we have uh, put correct fuel into the vehicle so they can and petrol they can do a simple blotting paper test if they want someone wants because uh, putting a uh, few drops of fuel into uh, the petrol into a blotting paper it should evaporate without keeping a stain if it is really uh, the petrol so likewise there are some simple ways uh, in identifying whether the fuel is good or bad okay so vimukti uh, well, yapa has just told us some ways that a motorist can identify substandard fuel what can motorists do to mitigate the effects of substandard fuel in their vehicles? Mm, that's a good question, uh, Ashra. Because uh, now, as the APA mentioned, uh, you get to know about this with the, uh, uh, with the uh, symptoms most of the time, right? So, now, to add, I'll just add something to what the APA said. Uh, explain the adverse effect of that and... Uh, move forward with your question and uh, now uh, now uh, he, he explained about like misfiring and things like that one thing i would I, I would advise a motor especially if you are using a modern car modern in the sense not uh, anything after 2005 okay uh, if you experience some sort of rough running uh, spluttering, misfiring, do not proceed. Please stop or go to the nearest garage, do not ignore and continue driving. If there is something genuinely wrong, you will incur further damage. Now, there was another interesting word he mentioned, uh, uh, knocking. Uh, so, now what is knocking? It's like knocking on the door. No, exactly that's, uh, that's what it is. So there are different technical terms. I think Kevin can also explain knocking, detonation, pre-ignition, and there are differences between this. But without getting too technical, what happens in knocking is that you know we 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 discuss that there is a rate that uh, fuel burns in an engine. Okay, uh, and Kalum uh, used the term flame propagation. So it's uh, what what happens in an engine uh, is is like uh, it's not simply an explosion it takes a certain number of a certain time uh, you have a enclosed chamber the combustion chamber and if it's a petrol engine it gives us you give a spark and then the the, the petrol air mixture near the spark plug starts burning and then it it little by little spreads toward, uh, towards the um, outer uh, wall of the combustion chamber. So it, it's like, just think about you, you are dropping a stone into a pond and then ripples are going, something like that. Uh, it, the, it, it's quite fast. It's like 50 to 150 feet per second, but it's not that fast. Now, you, example, if a stick of dynamite explodes, the shockwave goes like 8,000 feet per second. So compared to that, this is very slow. And what uh, 
and what knocking means that you know randomly haphazardly okay uh, the without without out of control the the fuel uh, starts igniting or exploding here and there right so this will result in a characteristic uh, metallic knocking noise or pinging noise in the engine especially during sudden acceleration uh, this is uh, now uh, engines modern engines have a lot of computer controls okay so they have what is called knock sensors and all which will uh, which will uh, which will uh, detect this and adjust the 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 other parameters ignition timing and all to prevent this from happening okay but nonetheless uh, there might be instances uh, where you see now the 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 way various engines digest bad quality fuel let's say fuel with low octane for example is different okay so these are what i am saying is not general uh, we, we, some some uh, engines some vehicles might cope with it without the owner ever noticing any difference in the performance but in some vehicles it might be that you know as soon as you uh, pump a bad quality fuel uh, it uh, you know it gets upset uh, and you really feel it is running rough and all so knocking and if you experience things like that of course knocking can happen due to other things also and also if you experience overheating and all uh, that can also be a result of knocking you should not proceed uh, driving your vehicle because uh, we are dealing with very high pressures and temperatures inside your engine okay it might be small but it has very very high pressures and temperatures and uh, there are certain, uh, and these explosions or these shock waves that are going uh, will damage the cylinder walls and the pistons right so if you detect any sort of knocking noise in your engine you should not drive that is one thing then also uh, that's my and i was just adding to what yapa said and also uh, you should pay attention to your fuel filters right uh, sir uh, your petrol filters there are filters in your tank uh, there there are filters on the way from the tank to the engine and there are fuel filters so you should change them regularly as specified by the manufacturer uh, and also uh, you should use uh, the best uh, fuel filters you can uh, afford especially during these times you this is not something that you should cut corners with uh, and also something that i do as a motorist uh, is that uh, i've set a certain a certain period um, um, in my case it's every four services i flush the tank and the fuel lines also to make sure that everything is uh, everything is clean uh, that's a good investment uh, especially in sri lanka Uh, because from my experience of doing that, uh, some sometimes it's it's very very clean. You think oh, why why did I clean it? But sometimes it's full of uh, you know deposits and particles uh, because uh, like we said in the beginning, most of the contamination happens at the retail the the fuel stations because of their underground tanks are not uh, clean and maybe the tank attracts off. so clean clean once in a while cleaning and flushing of fuel system is also important now another thing a lot of fuel additives and octane enhancers on the market and i've been asked also even this morning uh, by a motorist you know okay i am pump uh, i i usually uh, pump uh, uh, 95 i got 92 uh, shall i put this octane booster if i put two bottles uh, we, it will become like 95 no well uh, to be honest uh, there are a lot of such products on the market okay some very reputed ones that everybody swears by uh, some uh, cheaper but we don't know uh there are two types of these things which you can find in the market one thing is you know the which um, uh, this one thing is uh, these fuel additives which 
uh, break down long uh, molecules in the fuel uh, and break down sludge and so on uh, into you know uh, combustible uh, compounds okay this is available okay you can use that uh, then, then also there are what I uh, what they call octane boosters, which claim to increase the octane value of your fuel. So, what you have to understand is that uh, these uh, these octane boosters, these additives, are not magic potions. Okay, uh, and the maximum they can do is increase your octane by like one point. Uh, uh, so uh, maybe uh, if you put 92 you can get it up to 93 but don't expect it to go up to 95 okay uh, the other thing is that uh, if you are if you are to use some of these things um, you should always go for a reputed uh, brand of course it will be uh, expensive uh, but uh, don't uh, put dubious products uh, into your fuel system uh, and also I have to tell you um, from, from an engineer's perspective uh, we actually don't know what are inside these uh, these enhancers okay nobody tells us uh, and we don't know what the uh, uh, emissions are because of these uh, but what I can tell you is that the cheaper ones might contain lead. Now, long time before this octane came to be, uh, Yapa would remember, I remember when I was little, uh, when unleaded fuel was first uh, introduced, uh, then I was going to school, I think early, uh, the mid-90s. Uh, the, uh, before octane, what was used to, you know, ensure that the, the the fuel burnt evenly inside the, the combustion chamber was what is called tetraethyl lead. It's a it's a it's a compound which has lead. Uh, so certain cheaper octane boosters might have this tetraethyl lead, okay, which is bad for health uh, because uh, lead uh, lead and lead oxides come out of the exhaust. Oxide. So whatever, if you are using some uh, a product, you have to go for a good product, reputed product from a reputed manufacturer, look at the reviews, um, but do not expect miracles uh, from uh, fuel additives. Thank you, Vivukti. That's the most interesting and uh, building on what you said about additives and uh, Octane boosters and things. I would like to pass the topic on to Kalum because he has given quite a bit of prudent advice to people on social media, some of whom have actually been misled in this avenue. Kalum has set the record straight, so I would like to give him the opportunity to do yes. it here as well. So, to touch on um, Octane boosters, let me add a bit on to what uh, Vimukti said. So, these days, these uh, gas treatment, injector cleaners, those things are also being sold to customers and laymen basically as Octane boosters. So I would advise uh, these things don't uh, boost octane. So please don't uh, just spend money on those things. Uh, gas treatment and uh, injector cleaners won't change the octane. So when it comes to octane boosters, uh, there are like like Vimukti said, uh, the cheaper ones contain most of the cheaper ones contain harmful substances, and uh, there are ones which con which contain MMT as well. So MMT, uh, if it's in a very high concentration, it uh, results in debris. So this debris gets uh, collected in the catalytic converter and ultimately your catalytic converter will need replacement. And uh, also I've been uh, asked a couple of times about uh, the ratio that they mix. So people think now on the on a bottle of octane boost, it will say 10 points of front, increase of 10 points of front. So this 10 points doesn't mean that if you pump 92 octane, it's going to be 102 octane. It's 10 points means one, right? 10 points means one. So 10 points equals, if it's, if then now they give a ratio, mix this much, this many parts to this many parts of four. So when you mix it according to that, if it's 10 parts, 92, if it's 92 octane run, it will go on to 93 octane run. So that is what's claimed. 
So please know that it's not going to be because people think, okay, on the long run, we can pump 92 octane, put in some octane boost and it will be better. Even some people think it's even better than 95 octane, which is not. And also, please stick to this uh, volume mentioned on the bottles because if you change this, now I was asked this question constantly about adding two bottles of octane booster. So instead of one, right, to a full tank. So what happens is when you do that, the nature of the fuel changes and this injector timing also could change because the flow changes with the change in the density. So your car is mapped for fuel of a particular density. So if when you start doing these things, these things get changed and uh, the airflow ratio also will ultimately change. So that's going to cause a lot of problems. So please don't do that. And also uh, regarding uh, fuel, also there's something like this now. Just to add a bit on to what Yapa said uh, regarding uh, substandard fuel and you know what the vehicle also what we moved to touch on what we moved to said about the about how different engines uh, respond to substandard fuel. Certain engines have physical limitations. Example, if it's high compression by nature, uh, the the software and uh, the injector ignition timing can't do anything because by nature itself it's a, it's running a very high cylinder temperature. So they will definitely knock. Because uh, I have been asked this question, uh, okay, my vehicle, the recommendation is uh, octane number is run is 95 octane, but I'm pumping 92, but I have no problems. But that doesn't mean your vehicle is performing at its best. Because if it's a turbocharged car, your boost pressure is reduced. Your um, ignition timing is on the retard side. Your base timing must also be retard. So also, so what happens is you are ultimately are losing power, plus your airflow ratio is on the rich side because by, by that it is to keep the cylinder temperatures low by increasing the uh, uh, by getting the airflow ratio on the rich side. So by that you are going to burn more fuel. So by sometimes there there are some people who say okay when I pump when when fuel was available abundantly. There were people who experimented pumping 92 octane and 95 octane and some used to say my car gets better economy when I pump 95. So this is the case. So also your power band shifts. So if your power band shifts up, you have to rev it more to get the exact same power, which means it's going to burn more fuel. So if you are doing some spirited driving or if you are a fast driver or has a heavy foot, so you are definitely going to burn more fuel. So please, if it's, if it's, uh, octane 95 recommended please stick to that uh, also when it comes to uh, octane boosters don't put whatever that is in the market in my perspective also we really don't know what is in these things it's just the text some some don't even have the text sheets there's no msds there's no text sheet so uh, certain ones we really don't know what they put in they don't give it out so there's a risk end of the day if 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 it's your car if something happens to it you're the one who's going to suffer and you're the one who's going to spend on that so please be careful when you choose uh, Octane Boosters. Thanks, Kelum. You also I answered a bit of the next question. Uh, and that is that a lot of people are saying their vehicles are not as fuel efficient as before. First of all, let's discount the blatantly obvious when you're sitting in a fuel queue with the engine running, you're doing zero kilometers per liter. But discounting that and still seeing your vehicle is not as fuel efficient, uh, what would be the reason for that? Now, I have experienced on both my vehicles roughly 25% drop in economy since December of last year. Many other people are saying similar figures or even more. So what could be the reason for this, Kalum? It could be not just uh, octane ashra. I think it's it uh, results in the energy expelled by the combustion of the fuel as well, because uh, you need energy to break the carbon hydrogen bonds. So if more energy is needed for this baking process of the bonds, less energy is expelled by this process of burning so this could be also the case but we don't really have any technical data as such to prove that the petrol that we are getting now and the petrol we got before there's a difference so to come to a conclusion on this we definitely if we have a, a sample which we have taken previously we can actually test side by side and uh, get to the bottom of this because just like i touched on this uh, vaporization and factors like that which we consider when it comes to performance these 
things actually play a major role uh, on normal engines also because right now uh, they have high volumetric efficiencies and also high compression so they are, the conditions are such that they require very high quality fuel so uh, it's not just the octane that's playing uh, playing this uh, part but also the other elements of the fuel that uh, contributes to the energy dissipated also also the other factor is uh, change in their fuel ratio so if you have a wide band afr if you pump, plug it into one of these cars it's definitely running rich because that is to uh, prevent knock so that is one of the measures taken by your ecu to reduce and to prevent knock so that is that is one reason where you get a lot of fuel being burned and also the shift in the power band so if you if you are very conscious about it you would definitely feel that the power you got on the like the initial rpms somewhere around 2500 to 3500 the initial torque actually so that has got shifted up because uh, it's exactly so what ha what happens is uh, when you take the working of the engine the ignition timing plays a major role on this uh, initial uh, power band the initial initial uh, pickup so that is the torque so this torque gets shifted when you uh, change the ignition time. When you take it on the retard side, it changes. So you have to run more RPMs to get the exact power because your, your, your driving patterns don't really change drastically. Even with this uh, fuel crisis, you drive in a certain manner and you stick to that. That is how you how you're used to. So when you follow the same thing, you definitely uh, tend to burn more fuel. So these are the small, small points that I've uh, actually realized. Most interesting, Kalum. So, Anurudh, Yapa and Vimukti Randri, do you all have any uh, further things to add for our listeners about this whole fuel uh, debacle going on at the moment? I think Kalum explained it very well. He covered almost everything with regard to the, uh, the high fuel consumption. Uh, fuel consumption high when the, the power out is low. Definitely, uh, not up to standard. About can't expect uh, same uh, consumption may be high because if somehow the power out of engine, then we have to burn fuel, right? Some difficulties like king and all those now obstructing uh, the operation. Uh, our those has to power likewise uh, happens if the quality is bad yes if you have a inferior fuel uh, but you are asking the same performance from the engine it will do something to get it right it will change its uh, timing or uh, it, it will uh, change uh, if, it, if it has a turbo it will change the boost or uh, the how, how much fuel is injected or whatever you know parameter it can change it will change to try and meet your demand okay so the trade-off will be fuel consumption and you know certain things in modern engines like Calum explained uh, are very high compression they burn very lean because they they want to save fuel uh, and you know the, and certain features which would function uh, when it has the proper fuel uh, it will silently it won't it won't notify us it will just silently stop doing now for example there is something now this is a keyword also you can uh, our viewers can uh, search there is something called stratified charge fuel injection in certain european vehicles i think now japanese vehicles also have this uh, it's uh, when you're going on the highway and all it burns uh, at a the air fuel ratio is very very less very small amount of fuel those kind of features uh, may not work they just stop doing it because you can't sustain right so those fuel saving features uh, automatically they, de they they deactivate or activate depending on the knocking and and the performance of the, and and uh, the, the the performance of the engine so these the loss of these fuel saving features and period what happens is we are unable to harness the all the technology that is in your modern car because of the 
uh, substandard fuel. This might re result in uh, uh, high fuel consumption. Um, and of course, you know, uh, when we are talking about this now, the, the reason I also, like Callum said, the reason I also can't give a straight answer is that nobody has done a proper scientific uh, analysis comparing the fuel before and after. Right? We uh, nobody has done that. So um, some sometimes you know you find uh, cases where uh, you know people think, okay, I, I uh, pump this much of uh, petrol and now uh, for the same amount I can't uh, travel this uh, the same distance. But sometimes it's just uh, psychological. But uh, uh, but uh, whatever the case, uh, if if your fuel does not match. Uh, the requirement of your vehicle, uh, there is the possibility that uh, you uh, it will result in uh, poor fuel consumption. But uh, Ashra, poor fuel consumption is the least of your problems if you have substandard fuel <laughs> uh, that you can live with. But uh, further damage uh, is possible. That is our biggest concern. Uh, so uh, hard times, yes, but. Uh, as much as possible, try to, if you have a modern vehicle, try to find uh, the, the, the best fuel that you can. And uh, one, I have to stress once again to our viewers, no matter how desperate you are, do not buy from third parties. Please go to a, a petrol ship and get these things. Uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, take a risk uh, on uh, the, those kind of uh, things, uh, no matter how desperate you are uh, these days, uh, even uh, repairing a vehicle is a big challenge uh, in the coming months. So don't take that risk. Uh, if you don't have petrol, uh, keep it at home, <laughs> please. Uh, never buy petrol from third parties. Thank you, Vimukti. I think that is a very informative session from all of you gentlemen. I think it will really give our viewers the benefit in finally understanding this whole fuel debacle that we are going through. Thank you once again, gentlemen.